Street Fighter 6 update. Uh, is the legend legend rank in there? Is it for approximately 200 people? Is that how many people are getting it? Is that was is that the the thing, chat? 500 people. All right. So is it 500? How how much is the percentage? Do we do that 500 divided by 2.5 million? Here's how many people that is actually affecting. Yeah, is that worth to get a calculator up really quick? Is that how we do that math really fast? 500 divided by uh, two, 2.5 million people. Is this right? You you put the you put the smaller number first. Yes, that's how many people are affected by that chat. Do we times it by 100 after? Uh, so yeah, you have to do that, right? Then you add it. So 0 0.02, that seems a bit better, right? That seems a bit too low. That's the difference. You take the small number, divide by the big number and times it by a hundred to even out the percentage. 0 0.02 of the purchasing audience of Street Fighter VI. Chat, I hate, to I, hate to, I hate to break it to you, but not myself, not the majority of people you know, and also uh, not any of you are going to have to worry about this. Maybe a very small percentage of you are going to be very excited for this update. Yes, legend rank. I don't know, man. That's a that's a very small percentage. What about Justin? Oh, yeah. I mean, are you telling me that uh, one of the most renowned and winningest fighting game players of all time has a chance of being in the top 0.2%? I mean, I hate to break it to you. He already is. <laughs> Literally uh, one of the greatest fighting game players of all time and say, hey, can you possibly be really great at a fighting game? Yeah, yeah, the answer is usually yes. I'll just grind it out. Make that shit happen. I think this this latest Legends patch, and, and to be to be real, and I've made several videos in the past talking about this, you know what it takes to become really good at fighting games to actually make it to those higher echelons is uh, an insane amount of grinding. You just need to grind like a ton of situations, you need to grind effectively, all that kind of shit. That's just, it equates to time. You just need a lot of time. And for the past long while, I find it hard to grind anything anymore. I found that in my late teens and obviously early 20s and into my early 30s and stuff, yeah, gr grinding is sort of like a mindset that you just do because you're trying to like establish yourself, whether it's career, whether it is your personal interests, whether it is is your uh, your expertise, your skills, your fighting games. Like, man, I can tell you the grind set mindset definitely applies. But for fighting games, I've, I, I've had a take where, man, I don't grind fighting games really at all anymore. Even the ones that I'm like kind of okay at, like, dude, Street Fighter VI, I didn't even, I don't even know if I had over a thousand ranked games in total. So you have to just take the little bit of time you have and effectively use it and like apply it in a way that's quick. I found that even to be more challenging in some ways. I haven't really had like a grind set mindset for a lot of fighting games for quite some time. It really happened. No, no KBD practice, like nothing, nothing like that. I'll just go in and learn, right? I'm just gonna go in and have the game throw shit at my face and how do you dodge it if not counter it? And we'll see how it goes. Here's one thing I got to give Tekken 8 credit for. Tekken 8 actively knows it has a problem. It actively knows that learning its systems and learning how to fight its characters is a problem. Here's the thing. I have zero interest in absolutely grinding something into the wall and hating it and wanting to take breaks. I don't want to do that. I haven't actually done that for uh, a very long time with the majority of fighting games. The last fighting game I kind of grinded the hell out of was Marvel Infinite and it was for a few months. Then we got to like the relative close to the top in the world and I was like, yeah, I'm okay with like top 300 or something. But even DNF Duel when we got, we got top ranks in that, I was just having fun, right? It was just, I'm still having fun with this. I'm still having fun just finding good good opponents and getting into this shit. The deity rank was kind of like the same issue I have with the grind set mindset. Top ranks in DNF duel, this sort of like, you know, elo rate rating sort of thing where you have to chase this very small amount of number per match, like eight to 10 points and balance that against the other ones, man. I don't know. I think that's just like, I think sort of for incentive, it is just not enough for, for me anymore of somebody that just doesn't want to absolutely grind away, which is why we saw a lot of people not subject themselves to the grind, even really good players, right? Players that are obviously super good at Street Fighter VI. A lot of them just went back to the old grind and leveled themselves up to master rank with a lot of the roster with like several other characters. You know, it's a mentality thing. And for me, I'm not going to force myself to have to play this thing like over and over again. Like right now, I feel like I got a pretty good amount of MK1 in my system and I want to come back to it. I do. I still don't have a main specifically, but I'm, I'm having fun and we got to like demigod and I haven't played that much ranked all things considered. The game gives you a goal, right? Games give you clear and concise goals to, to reach towards that are relatively in some ways respectable, right? And for, for a lot of people that, that 
those goals are impossible, right? I've, I've already heard from several people that, bitch, I started in like silver and you're asking me to get to master in Street Fighter VI. This is going to be a nightmare. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. Like goals for people are 100% comparable right they are, they are they are different from one end to the other in terms of how you approach like a level up feeling street fighter 6 has a pretty clear like ending so did dnf duel so does killer instinct to a certain point it's got a pretty clear end point it's like we got to get you to killer rank we got to get you to deity rank we got to get you to master rank and then after that it is a grind against all those other players and i just don't find that as appealing i'm kind of like my incentive like i had my big celebration moment we got it now i have to like create something you know we've reached this like 99 percent now you're in this top one percent to eat inch out the one percent after that you know it's like hitting a fitness goal in some way where you're like all right if i want to work beyond this fitness goal now i really got to commit now i got to start counting calories on everything i eat now you got to really start optimizing and for some people that's going to be really fun and for me i just like i like i just learn i just like learning new things man for me i just enjoy getting something new presented to me spreading out amongst like a lot of different things and getting decent at them over time I, and i think that's just where i'm at in my my own personal life you know, I don't feel like I have the need to absolutely just grind away at one individual thing over and over again. Because ultimately, while one thing is there, there's another thing that pops up like another fighting game that pops up or another single player game or anything. And I would like to do that. The other thing I would argue is that at right now, at this point, I don't have specifically a negative feeling about Street Fighter 6. And I feel like a lot of people that uh, super grind it out are starting to grow ever more evergreen kind of like negative opinions about it because they are really hammering it home and it's a vanilla fighting game and it while it does have really good mechanics for a vanilla fighting game it clearly will need some work over time a large amount of people that have been super grinding elo rank and mr and all that stuff they're kind of burning themselves out and they're finding things that they can control they're finding things that are frustrating they're finding things that uh that that the tier list is starting to make obvious i don't want to do that it's draining mentally and it's not a bad thing if you're doing that because you have a drive to become an uh, upper echelon part of that community like you have a drive to do it completely understand that's literally what makes some of the best fighting game players but you obviously can't do that for everything and when you do that i have found that it's personally better for me to return to a fighting game and have a really good positive feeling of that game for example 100 feel that if i had been super grinding mk1 and super grinding street fighter 6 I might share just as many concerns as other people. I might, but I haven't really. And I've got like less than 500 total ranked games, I think in Mortal Kombat 1, so I'm still having fun with it. Less than a thousand total games in like Street Fighter 6 amongst even the best characters I played, the ones that, or even the one that went to master. Like to me, they're still in a, a, in a phase right now. I'm still in a honeymoon phase with those games. And people were sort of like, like wanting to get out of that honeymoon phase. I want to just cram this and get out of the honeymoon phase as fast as possible. And I think as a broadcaster, as someone that has to play a lot of shit, I want to make that honeymoon phase, dude, I want to make that shit last as long as possible. I want the first year of something to be a honeymoon phase, especially if it is competitive. And that's that's not easy because some some games honeymoon phases are like trying to trying to like make themselves unenjoyable as quickly as possible. I swear to God. And that was a lot of fighting games that were very simplified in the mid 2010s. It was just like, woof, man. All right, the, 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 this game is, uh, we figured this out too quick. What's nice about Street Fighter VI and Mortal Kombat 1, from something that's playing these games on a relatively mid-level and enjoying the learning process and figuring stuff out and getting better every single time I play them, I'm having a great time. Games are wonderful. I, I, I'm actually looking forward to going back to Street Fighter VI to playing like a much faster game than Mortal Kombat 1 has been, because Mortal Kombat 1's kind of slow until you get combos and shit. So I'm trying to make this last, right? I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I want these games to be as interesting. It's been a long time since I've really liked Street Fighter. Like fucking A, it's been a long time since I really liked Street Fighter. It's been a long time since I've really liked an NRS game or a Mortal Kombat. I want to make that last. Unfortunately, Street Fighter's not offering a lot of new incentives to jump back and play it. So I'm just kind of like, you know what? I I'm fine. I'm fine. I don't need to, 
I don't need to immediately jump back in and uh, begin the grind all over again. There's plenty of other things we can do. Killer Instinct might actually become relevant again if uh, an update comes out soon. So we're probably gonna be playing a lot more KI. Grand Blue Fantasy Versus is gonna have like a new big updated version of the game. We played barely any of the beta before. So that's getting a new beta, that's coming out. There's already several things. And then we literally have the third giantest fighting game out there, which is Tekken about to become a thing too. There's already a lot, right? Fighting games are trying to get your attention. All I'm trying to, to say is from my perspective of somebody that plays a lot of this shit, I don't play all of it, but I try to play a lot of it. I don't want to dig into it so hard where I really start to dislike the way the game's played. I really don't. We're waiting on it. We're, we're still waiting on that Dragon Ball rollback. I feel like the last moments I had with Dragon Ball Fighters chat was that Oh, I really like this game. I have several characters I really enjoy, but because there is this new thing that is going to be like coming in the future, I'm gonna wait so I can have my experience actually be good if it ever happens. I'm at that point where I'm like, oh, okay. You know, uh, if this Dragon Ball update ever comes out, I really enjoy playing this game. And I, I, have, I have a few characters that I really like now. That was my problem with Dragon Ball at the start. I just didn't have characters that I loved. I got that and I like it but the online experience was severely compromised. So we are just waiting for that new shit. I didn't even play the new patch. I am I know, I know it's crazy. Even when I get a new patch, it's gonna be new things my characters can do. I wanna re-enter that experience and be excited all over again. I wanna like re-evaluate and re-experience all those things that I really enjoyed about Dragon Ball early on. I want that to happen again. Again, I'm not saying having a grind set mindset about like games or anything like that is bad. And I've gone through that for a shit ton of games. I feel like we're just in a spot where there's a lot of options. And if you want to commit to one of them, commit to it, man. Go crazy. Grind out that that legend and elo rank. But to see that that legend rank 0.02% of people are actually going to be affected by this legend ranking update, that's mostly for content creation, right? It's mostly for like the, the, the top 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 content creators that are you know best street fighter players possibly fighting each other for their points it'll be fun for that but it really doesn't affect that much.